Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think a better good afternoon would do means it makes me feel like you guys are really hungry and want to get away with the session. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Shom, and this is my colleague. I am Shom. It's a really pleasure to be here for the second time. How many of you were part of my session last year? Or oh, some of you were there. Great. Thanks. I'm, going to not, I'm not going to ask that because I was taking up the startup uh, you know, sessions. I think I have just been promoted to growth, maybe doing something right. Um, so there's, there's something I always, you know, uh, when I grew up, my, my grandmom used to tell me this, and I think she was a brilliant copywriter. So we're talking about copywriting in the age of uh, shrinking screen sizes. I'm not sure about the laptop sizes or the size of the fact that we don't have so much of time and effort to look into things. So having said that, she used to say something very beautiful, and I think it, it, it applies to copywriting as well. Icha shakti, jnana shakti, kriya shakti, namo nama. It's a Sanskrit sloka, which means that one needs to have the ability or the want to learn and research about their audience, should have the knowledge to continuously try and make the products more acceptable in the market, and most importantly, should have the ability to execute it. That's Kriya. Having said that, we're going to talk a little about if, the, if copywriting is dead. Um, I run a company, Unspun. Um, you know, every day we deal with different com companies, different customers, and one of the things we often debate and talk about, and how many of you really know the difference between content and copy? Please raise your hand. Uh, uh, what's your name? Rishabh? So, Rishabh, why don't you enlighten us? Why don't you come up here? Because that this, this is not a session where we give you any gyan because it's cross-learning. So, Rishabh, please come up here and tell us what, what, do you, what is the difference between content and copy? So, I, if I'm wrong, please excuse me. But I believe content can be uh, media, can be any type of information that is coming. Mm -hmm. But copy is something very specific that people engage with, people get the message. So, something that would go um, you know, on your landing pages that will really drive... Uh, engagement, in other words. Does that? Uh, I think that does the job. Okay, we have so many mics. Um, I think one we can just give it to them. So, um, the, you know, the, the irony is what Rishabh said, we have become so digital focused. He talked about landing pages. I would have loved it if you also talked about holdings a little bit. They're not dead. ATL works beautifully. Otherwise, uh, you'll be surprised to know how many of you know the statistics that most of the startups who are in the Series A or B phase have spent 70% of their budget on ATL, on offline marketing. It still works. It does beauty. And, that, and that's the thing, right? You know, you need to know that when you need to translate offline to online, and that's where copy plays a very important role. So I said, I'm Shom and I do blah, blah, blah. Then saying, I'm Dr. Shom Singh. I went to MIT and I think I'm very capable of delivering a session here. You'll be like, okay, I want to know a little more about her. Right? Most of the times, the re reason email open rates have been shrinking and dropping day by day is because of the subject line. Because most people don't open the mails after they read the subject line. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that correct or not? You read the subject line and then you open the mail. Or do you really get so inquisitive that, oh my god, I'm not sure what gossip am I going to read and learn about today. So let me go ahead and open the mail. Does it happen to you guys? You, you, you oh, yeah, open the mail because you feel that uh, you know, the, the subject line ex it was exciting enough. The best copies have always been written behind the trucks. David Ogilvy didn't write those copies. The horn, okay, please, or te, buri nazar wale tera mukala, I think are the best copies. And I think, you know, if you guys agree with me, raise your hands. Because really, it didn't, it didn't require a lot of thinking. It's about simple messaging. So why do we say, uh, this is not moving. Okay, great. So in terms of copywriting being dead, right? So we wanted to do this as a debate, and I think you guys are too many people to do it. So I would have some of you guys come over and share your uh, experiences and inputs, because that's going to really kind of deliver the messages. Cross and I always believe uh, that me and Pradeep are not here just to share our experiences with you, but also to learn a little from your experiences. So I would need about four volunteers. So who would want to be on TV? Come. <laughs> just kidding. Come over. What's your name? Abhay, please come over. And uh, by the way, your name itself means that fearless, right? Abhay is indeed very fearless. The first one to say he's going to be a part of the debate. Abhay? Vineo? Welcome on stage, Vineo. Thank you for, uh, you know, volunteering. Two more, two more people, please. Where are the ladies? 
oh my God, means, go ahead, come, 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 two more. Ooh, somebody did his jogging well. What's your name? Connor. Connor? Hello, everyone. <laughs> and sir, what's your name? Hi, my name is Anil. Uh, Mr. Anil, do you want to say hello to everyone? Hi, everyone. Okay, so when you say hello, also tell, please tell uh, where you come from, what you do, so that people get the context of the debate. So I need two people for and two people against the motion, right? Um, we're going to, to talk about the motion. If, is copywriting dead? Yeah? So if you believe it's not, then you have to place your comments and say why not. And if you believe it is, you're going to tell me why it is. So just to give you a little bit of context, um, how many of you can actually notice why this copy is exceptional from Expedia? What does it say? Have a? That's right. Everybody wishes you a safe trip. It's all about saving a few bucks when you have the trip. And the beauty of Acts, I'm not sure if you can read it, but it says sexual harassment of men have gone up by 16%. Wow, and that's kudos to Axe. But you know what, it makes you take up notice. You, wouldn't, you would read that and you're like, who has actually, which brand is talking about it? And that's the beauty of great copy. It's about triggering an emotion. And, and you know, so, so I always say this, make it simple, make it memorable, make it interesting enough for someone to take notice, and make it fun to read. And both these copies do it. So having said that, we'll move on to our debate. While you guys do place your uh, you know, viewpoints, so who's for? Copywriting is dead? Yeah. Okay, so these two guys are for? Yeah, yeah I'm for. You're, you're for the motion that copywriting is dead? Oh, or? Sorry. Not yet. You're against, okay, these two guys are against the motion and you're for the motion? Mm, I think copywriting works. <laughs> yeah, copywriting. We can get a swinger, that doesn't matter. Anil? Yeah? Okay. So, so we will make this, we'll make this about like, you know, we'll, we want to get three points from each one of you. And if you can give us some examples, that'd be lovely when you say that, right? And try to keep in mind, you know, the difference between content and copy. Talk a little about the email part of things and, and also talk about where you see ATL is moving, right? Over to you. Go ahead, Hi, uh, I run an information security company. So the reason I feel copywriting is not dead is because of a small experiment we did last year to this year. Last year, uh, I mean, we are techies, so obviously things tend to be very technical, a lot of jargon and all of that stuff is thrown around. So our newsletters and emailers to customers used to have a lot of that technical content. And this, and we saw some, I mean, we saw very, very uh, probably below average results. And this year, when we actually simplified the subject lines, just the subject lines, and I mean, the content was still a little technical, but we, we made it a little less technical and we simplified the subject line to something a little more attention grabbing like you could be hacked or uh, your employees could be your biggest uh, weakness or whatever it is, something like that. We saw uh, you know, click rates rising, we saw a lot more people engaged and a lot more people started appreciating our content when they actually were able to open the mail and see things. So that is why I feel copywriting is not dead. So. Yes, sir. That's some great points. Do you want to take it forward from there? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I don't believe copywriting is dead because we've done plenty of split tests with headlines. And we've realized it's really just, there's just so much crap on the internet. And what people are really looking for is personalization. And so a lot of headlines with you, or it's very simple, like five words, immediately gets their attention, and then they, they go for it, they click it. But you know, it really just depends on who your audience is and if you have, uh, you're using the words they use. And that's why I think copywriting works is because it's just, if you do your homework with Ethos, Pathos, Logos, you win. So. so would you give us an example? Firstly, tell us which company, give us an example of, of an activity that you did where it really applied well. Okay, so I represent Dale Mill, which is a, a matchmaking, uh, service, uh, online dating app connecting uh, South Asians globally. Um, and one of the exercises we tried out was testing Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. And so one of the tests I'm doing right now currently in India uh, for men and women, iOS devices versus Android devices is the copy uh, is, it's either new South Asian dating app or 
the other one, which is a lot longer, is 500,000 uh, matches already made connecting, you know, South Asians. And then on the bottom, another sentence saying, please tag your friend if you think they would be interested. And so, you know, out of that, I'm just finding out that the one that's shorter is just getting more people's attention, as well as, you know, playing around with call to action buttons, like install now, mm -hmm. learn more. I mean, it's, a lot of it is just testing and then seeing what works. And then also maybe looking at what your competition is doing and borrowing certain things. Awesome. Yeah, you know, Pradeep in this session is going to talk about some amazing examples that you're going to kind of, you know, take forward from there. So you, I know you didn't want to be against the motion, so you can start by four and then say if you have any, any other points in case we are not pushing you to be against the motion. Um, well, <laughs> I, I, I actually do believe that, that copywriting um, is still relevant. So mm -hmm. I don't really want to de derail the conversation <laughs> too much. But um, so I've, I've got two examples. One is email and, and one is, 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 uh, is kind of content copy. So I run a startup learning platform, um, and to to kind of get that launched and off the ground, what we've done is is tried to uh, think about copywriting a lot when we're actually writing things for our for our landing page and our about page and that kind of stuff. And so we want to um, really kind of rally entrepreneurs to to enjoy the experience and to share it. And so the type of wording we use in that is very important, as well as making sure that the the, the words we use and the examples we use are kind of gender balanced because um, if we're not, then um, uh, we get we see we see drops in uh, in the kind of engagement of people. So copywriting for branding has been really important for our um, for my website. And then uh, alongside that, I'm the kind of head of growth for a Instagram scheduling tool. And so we've made a scrape to pull about 10,000 emails a day um, from people on Instagram. And through email copywriting, we've managed to get that up to 60% open rates uh, from cold emails um, through copywriting, making it um, friendly, personal emails. And uh, I think 30% of the people that open the emails actually click click through to our website. And that's, again, just making kind of going through, making sure we don't use any negative words in our emails, making sure that we test our headlines, um, making sure that yeah we, we don't make it seem like a company is sending out the emails to them, make it seem like um, we're personally reaching out to them, complimenting them on their, um, their Instagram account and, and things like that. And so copywriting really helps us doing that. So have you guys, like any one of you, tried any offline uh, medium of copywriting, have you? Yeah, go ahead, share, share with us, because you're in the business of trying to make people happy, so I'm sure. So, um, this actually isn't attached to mm -hmm. Dill Mill, it's something I was just testing out in sure. New York City, because that's where I was living uh, at the time, was just handing out flyers. Mm -hmm. And the flyer really just has a call to act. it has a headline, a call to action, and just like the email address, and when they visit, they go to a landing page, which gives them a freebie, and then when they opt in, they automatically get the freebie, and then a bunch of welcome emails convincing them to be engaged enough to, cons to consider opening the next emails. And that's where copywriting plays a big part because most people are bored out of their minds. Um, I know, uh, you know, at this event, people are probably feeling sleepy, you know, and me talking right now. But with copywriting, you know, you have to add like narratives. So with those emails at the end of a PS, I'll say, oh, the next email is gonna talk about this and if you're interested. While at the same time looking at my email analytics to see if that's even working. Right. Awesome. Anil. Yeah. Do you wanna uh, be against the motion or do you actually wanna well, prove that Pradeep and I are doing the right thing by being, <laughs> doing the session? The motion. <laughs> I am for the motion. You're for is the motion? A, okay. Yeah, very much, very much here to stay. The copywriting end is uh, evolving. Uh, the first uh, two years of our business, we did we could not uh, uh, make any clients. Mm -hmm. uh, in the next uh, one year, when we worked on the content uh, we are writing, now we have almost 100% uh, conversion rates. Mm -hmm. So I suggest people uh, to be more creative uh, in copywriting and adopt uh, new techniques so that you win in business. I think, um, you know, thanks to, first of all, thanks to all of you guys for coming over uh, and being on camera and 
just kidding, just sharing your experiences. I think it just makes me and Pradeep more confident because we thought a lot of people are going to say, oh, no, we think it's dead. We don't know the difference between content and copy. But it's amazing to see how uh, you know, well aware the founders are. And I'm, I'm very happy to also see that you guys actually get into or rather dwell into the details of the copy because it's not a text job. You have to be hands-on. You have to A-B test to be able to figure out what works. So big round of applause to the guys. Thank you so much for being up here. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. It's a, take all the candies, not just some. Take all the candies. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm not sure how many copywriters are here. Can I, can I see your hand, like a raise of hands? OK. So a founder who's a copywriter as well. Uh, surprisingly, there are not many, right? Because it's, it's not treated as a defined job description. It's not like, you know, you have to. Uh, have a certain panache or ability to do. Nowadays, it's all about intellect. You have to be smart enough to delve into knowing what your product really does and be able to articulate that. And anyone can do it, right? If my grandmom could, anyone can. So I wanted to show you something which is more of a case study. Um, you know, uh, before Pradeep gets or rather delves into the world of how digital, uh, you know, takes over and where the melange really happens. Um, Economist did this recently, right? Uh, it's about the union or the symphony between offline and online. You have to be extremely cognizant that whether you are a food tech company, whether you are a, you know, a, a lingerie brand that's doing their online retail, whether you're a marketplace for events, there's, a, there's still a lot of customers that take action by seeing offline to online, you know, just like our friend over here shared with us. So it's, it's very important to keep that in mind, keep that sentiment in mind that what is going to trigger that behavior that they see something and want to come and learn more about us? Economist's goal was very simple. We are a paper read by leaders. And how do I exemplify that? So this is what they did. So they had like, you know, they had their banners put up, ignore obstacles. And you're like, what do you mean by ignore obstacles? I, I, some kind of a, uh, you know, security company. Not really, right? Uh, you would like, would you like us to give you a wake up call? I mean, these things, you don't even connect with that of a brand which is like economist. But this is exactly how they took that and converted it online. And whoever imagined E is equal to IQ square. Right? So it's like, if you don't have the brains, we are not for you. And that's quite a strong statement to make, right? And that's very important. So remember, you can be writing 140 characters in Twitter, and that can be copy. And you'll be using the same 140 characters on a banner. That is copy too. Just have to be cognizant about the message that you're delivering. So having said that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Pradeep. Pradeep is going to now take what offline we talked about to online and uh, you know, share some great intelligence with you. Great. Thanks, Shom. Thank you for creating the context. Can I have the clicker? Okay. So uh, you know, I just want to get a sense of the people over here. How many of you are directly involved in copy of a digital campaign in your organization? Wow. I think we have a significant percentage of the people, right? And how many of you are indirectly involved? Maybe you are managing a team. You're not doing it hands-on yourself, but you have a role to play in that. Great. So, <clears throat> you know, there is different definitions of content and copy. And in digital, it becomes even more confusing. You know, someone says that content, copy involves content. So what we are going to look into is we are going to look into some of the great examples of how digital has used this to fulfill different objectives, right? And let's have an understanding of that as well. So for how many of you, your objective behind writing a great copy is primarily brand building or, you know, creating visibility? Okay. And for how many of you, lead generation is a primary objective? Ah. And how many of you are looking at using that for direct, you know, conversions happening if you are purely an online business? I think we have a kind of equal distribution. So, uh, you know, we are going to look into the examples as I shared. And before I get into specific examples, this is one framework which I thought was, you know, very useful. I want to share. There is a book called Made to Stick. It's a very popular book and it has this framework called success model. If you want to have your idea, if you want to have your message stick, or you want people to engage with that, I think if you can keep these six principles, you will find completely different results. So the way they have defined is success so that you can easy to remember. 
where S stands for something simple. You know, we were looking into examples and he shared about simplicity, right? U is, second one stands for unexpected. If your copy can have something, you know, which people didn't expect, you would see completely different results. It could be across any medium, you know, even offline, but online it becomes even more relevant. Then your messaging has to be concrete. You cannot have people be confused, right? Credibility, you know, we've been talking about, I think even in the previous session about, you know, if you are credible, people will have trust to share their details, take an action you wanted them to take. Then E is emotional. You know, we've been, of course, talking about storytelling and can your message invoke emotions? And last S stands for story. So, you know, of course, stories can evoke emotions, but overall, are you writing it a great, you know, just maybe great professional content or you are creating in such a way that it is communicating a message which is entertaining because it's in the form of a story. And last S is just to remember, right? So to the degree you can have these principles be embedded into your message, you will find results, right? And we will see some of the examples of that. I think the best company we can learn from today is in terms of having a great copy is Amul, right? I'm sure each one of us have been entertained, surprised, and now, of course, earlier it was all offline, but if you look at even online, their Facebook page, whatever presence they have in the online world, I think they are the best to connect what's happening latest with their product, right? So they will connect Sachin Tendulkar with their butter, Narendra Modi to, you know, with their other, maybe Amul uh, through their milk, and here, you know, like when Pele visited, Pele up, and still connecting their brand, Asli Khatirdari, right? So very simple and still so effective, right? Let's look into more examples. Now, this I read this morning itself, I was coming from Delhi in the newspaper, I saw Business Standard that Practo is doing really well in terms of the way they are having their message. So typically, I hope all of you are aware, we have a session at, by Practo founder as well. You know, medical or health field is typically very significant. You want to go to a hospital, you want to get a doctor, it's typically painful. So they said that we want to, you know, keep that interesting, we want to evoke a smile rather than making it discomfortable. So these were two of their, and they have a lot of these messages like that. You want to find a right urologist, tip, tip, barsa pani, pani ne aag lagai. When it is about dentist, muskurane ki vaze tum ho, right? So, you know, the way they are communicating and still connected with their brand. One of the mistakes I have seen a lot of people make, especially when Facebook, people learned that they need to cause engagement and that is the key metric. People missed out on connecting their brand with the messages. You know, holiday companies are sharing jokes which are not at all connected with their brand. You may have a great joke which will have your fans appreciate, but if that is not connected with your brand, you will miss out the opportunity, right? So I think we saw in Amul, we see here, there is a strong connect with the brand and still very effective. Now, and it need not be just very simple, it can be detailed and you know more intellectual as well. And this Zomato did, things vegetarians are tired of hearing. And they give various, you know, instances, situations. And if you look at the, you know, shares of this, like 34,000 shares. So it can be thoughtful, it can be detailed, it can be intellectual, but of course it has to be effective. And again, connecting with their brand. Now let's look into Twitter. This is our personal example, you know. Uh, how many of you have heard about Hippo? Many of you, right? So Hippo is into selling wafers or chips, right? And they have a very unique positioning. Now, uh, if you look at this, let's read their Twitter bio, right? Or and before that, even their handle, sorry. Let's read their handle. So, hello me hippo is their Twitter handle. Hippo say right after hunger. And let me read the bio. Hippo make munchies to fight hunger because world be better if no one hungry. Hippo say anything that not kill hippo will only make hippo better hunger fighter. So what they are saying is, you know, people who are not hungry, people who are filled, are satisfied, successful. Hippopotamus having the biggest mouth is always, you know, fulfilled, satisfied. If you eat hippo, you will be successful, you will be satisfied. The way they communicate is special, right? So what did you notice in the communication? 
What is this style of language? Sorry? Tier to English, okay. What else someone was sharing from here? Sorry? Hippo island. It's a broken English, right? And that's, they communicate everywhere. If you look into their packaging. So now, you know, how I experienced more with them was we were doing a, you know, our social media workshop and we were sharing this example. Their case study about, you know, Hippo being able to use Twitter to generate a lot of buzz for them. And, and we sh someone in the audience shared about that. And they responded on Twitter saying that, Kati. Again, broken English, you didn't invite us, something like that. And I, we responded on Twitter saying that, we'll be happy to have you present your case study. Why don't you write to us? And this was a mail I got. Dear Pradeep, Hippo say, first of all, Hippo happy to know you like Hippo. But Hippo also want to know if you also joining Hippo Army to fight hunger. Hippo also happy that you sharing Hippo effort with more big, big people in social media. So if you need any information or recipe, you can contact their creative person. He hippo friend and also very helpful. Hippo say waiting to hit from you. Okay, bye bye now. Papa hippo needs this computer. Love hippo. So the recall of this was so strong that, you know, around a month later, I had gone to buy lace for my daughter. And I saw hippo. And this, you know, got reminded and I picked hippo. And it's supposed to be healthier, tastier. And that, from that day, I have shifted to hippo. So the point is, you know, if you can be creative, you can be entertaining, you really can have a very strong recall. You may not know how much impact of a communication or a conversation like this will, will impact your final sales, but it works. And I'm sure probably in their organization, that's what they use, except in the formal documentation where they are not allowed to do that. Probably that's what they do everywhere. That's part of the culture, right? So to that extreme steps, you really need to imbibe that as part of your culture. Let's look into more example. How many of you know about Ramesh Srivats? I think he is one of the most popular person on Twitter. Once even Shah Rukh Khan had retweeted his message saying that you are really cool dude. And he got 10,000 followers just after that tweet. And if you see his tweets, I think, I don't know how effective he is to write so creative, so humorous. Like this message, any issue in India is complete only after a Twitter trend, an earner brand, a Sakshi Maharaja quote, a Chetan Bhagat solution. And if you see 2200 retweets, like few hundred retweets are minimum for every tweet. And I think he writes multiple tweets probably a day. And so effective in writing so fast and still creative. Let's look into SEO, right? How much role copy can play in your search engine optimization? By the way, how many of you are doing something related to search engine optimization for your organization? Many of you, right? And say for others who might not be aware, SEO is a process of getting your website ranked on search engines for relevant keywords. Now we always strive for getting the top rankings, right? That's always the objective. For relevant geographies, relevant keywords, you want your site to be on the top three, if not top one. There is a lot more and possible even if you are not on the top, if you use some of the interesting elements. It's not just about text, right? Today copy involves a lot of other elements. So I'll share one example of ours. So this is a result when you search for a digital marketing certification, this is a result which comes from our website. What do you notice here? Something special? Sorry? Ratings is one, right? So even if this may be ranked, so though it is already, I think, ranked probably second or third, even if it is ranked seventh, people are going to notice this and you are going to get more people click on that. Sorry? And of course, then is you need to have a call to action, join free orientation. You need to have numbers to make it credible. So whatever elements of success I shared, a lot of that is embedded, right? If you just write a pure text, people will not notice. Here there are numbers to lend credibility. There is a call to action. There is a free word. But something to notice here is having reviews. Those stars create attention. Let me share another example. What do you notice here? So this is a general assembly is one of the great companies doing, you know, training programs for entrepreneurs in US and a lot of other geographies. What do you notice here? And this is their search results, organic results. So they have used this schema for 
date for the events. Now, what this helps is the amount of space this rack, you know, result gets is almost double of a normal result. So, if your product or service involves dates, you know, if you have an event, then you can use that schema so that you gain double the space. Let's look into another example of search engine marketing. Now, this is something interesting, not directly so much tangible in terms of copy, but used in an interesting way. So there is a company called Unbounce, which is known for landing pages. And they have a competitor called Instapage. Now, what they did, this is, so when you search for Unbounce on S Google, you see Unbounce result as the top result. And there is an ad by Instapage. Now, you cannot have, one of the restrictions Google have is, you can have an ad for the brand's, the competitor's brand name, but you cannot have their registered trademark in your copy of the ad. But still they are there. Sorry? They play on the? Absolutely. So did you notice that? It is not unbounce, it is unbounce. N is missing here. Because otherwise Google will disqualify this ad. So they said, like, how many of you did not notice this? Most of you did not notice this, right? So if you are as a searcher, you are searching, probably you would not notice. But since you would see unbounce, you would get confused and then definitely you would want to see that. And the way they have written unbounce is overpriced, you would definitely want to check that. Right? Now, this is another example where, you know, special characters are used. In your ad copy, not just in other areas, SEO I shared, even in your ad copy, you can have special characters used. You know, star, like asterisk, register, there are a lot more. So when you have a special character, you bring attention. And when you do that, you have more people click on your ad. That means your position will go up, your cost per click will go down. So ultimately, the idea is to have more and more people use what you want them to be communicating. Let's look into more example. Now, this is how many of you know about retargeting? Some of you have heard, right? So retargeting is essentially if you visit a website and you didn't take the action the website wanted to take, maybe buying a product, and you came out of the site, then within a few minutes, while you are on other websites, you saw an ad from the original website. Have you noticed that? So retargeting allows you to reach out to your audience who visited you earlier but did not take the action you wanted them to take. And it can be done on display ads. It can be done even on Facebook. So you can target people on Facebook, only those people who have visited your website earlier. So we said that you know we are all about educating people about digital marketing. That's a business we are in. Why can't we use some you know technical terms to invoke interest? So this is an ad which is retargeting ad. And we are talking about that, that we are retargeting you. Did you visit our website? And then people, for those who are not aware about retargeting, it's like a surprise. There are a lot of participants of our program who said that if, you know, you can teach us how we can do for our business, I want to do this program. Like a lot of people really, they, for those who are not aware, they got excited that this is possible. I visited their website and then they are retargeting and there's something like retargeting. And then on your landing page, you can have a brief introduction about this. And then having a people say that, moving to the next stage, you want to learn this, you want to master this. So typically, you know, retargeting, if you not just even on Facebook, our cost per lead of retargeting campaigns is roughly 2.5 times lower. Because of lower cost per click, because of higher conversion. And not just conversion into leads, a good percentage of the participants in our program come from a remarketing or retargeting campaign. So you will find it to be much effective. Of course, there will be duplication as well. You might have already got that lead through email marketing and then you got a lead through Google AdWords. Or you would have gone, already got a lead from two and then you are getting from Facebook as well. So a percentage of those leads will be duplicated, but given the cost per lead is at least half, and still you have conversions, this is really worth it. Oh, you won't use retargeting, so there are a lot of things you need to take care. Say if someone has already bought your product, if someone has already filled a form, you want to exclude those people. 
you want to make sure that you have a certain frequency you don't see show the person at 10 times so there is an option for a frequency capping and since especially on facebook people are not searching again you are showing the same ad make sure that you have five six copies of the retargeting ad so that otherwise people are bored so i think if you keep those aspects and i'm sure there are more but if you can take care of these aspects retargeting can be amazing right does that help great now these are some of the call to actions right now this is from quick sprout and they wanted to promote this guide about you know traffic generation and you have two choices first yes send me the free traffic generation guide second no i have enough traffic really like you know ridiculing the person you would definitely say i would want to check this the second option persuades you to take the first step let's get into some of those similar examples like this is having you subscribing to a newsletter to effectively and smartly use that and it is validating or riding on you know appreciating you that yes i am being i would like to be smart and that's why i would subscribe for this so the chances of you subscribing would be higher because it says yes i like being smart if you don't then you are saying that i am not smart to yourself here the best button you will ever click of course you know a lot of times some of these may not work but the idea is to experiment can you be crazy can you go to extremes so this is you know across multiple okay uh, i think so i picked from most likely hubspot or crazy x so there is a article which has all of these at one place so i can share the link i don't know which particular company this is from now how many of you know about landing page optimization i think especially given lead generation is an objective i quickly want to share some of the key aspects of a landing page optimization how many of you are aware about landing page optimization some of you right say let me share the purpose because i'm sure that's going to be very very relevant when you run an ad you have two choices people click on an ad they can go to your website they will browse through different sections a percentage of them will take an action you wanted them to take maybe you know filling a form subscribing to a service buying a product even a very high percentage of them may find your product or service relevant but say that looks interesting i will come back all research shows that within few minutes of they exiting your website they don't even remember your product service brand or company name so they were interested but they forgot so you missed out on a huge opportunity of those percentage of people who could have opted for your service so and especially people who clicked on an ad they didn't know about you earlier so rather than driving them to your normal website where they can browse and get lost you drive them to a specially controlled page which is what we call landing page where your objective is you want to improve your visit to lead or visit to sale conversion because you have a controlled environment so this is a landing page for our program and i want to share about four elements of a successful landing page first you need to talk about your product and service briefly within few seconds so landing page will be crispier it will be shorter so whatever product or service you are promoting you still need to talk about that right so you need to do that within few seconds and that's this section we do that very very important is you need to build credibility unless you do that people will not have comfort to share their details so like we talk about our partnership with microsoft and google exclusive certification our history in terms of being there since 6 years all of that so that's a second element third having a form at a visibly located position of course you know all of these sections you need to be brief the copy makes a lot of difference both in terms of visual and text having a form at a visibly located position preferably at a top right corner and if you can give an additional incentive like you know attending a free orientation session a guide their chances of filling a form will be even higher and fourth people have just two choices either they fill this form or they close this page no other option even your logo is not linked and if you take care of these four aspects your visit to lead conversion will most likely multiply you are not going to see 10 15% jump compared to if you drive them to your normal website 
you will see probably two times, three times. So if for the same ad spend, if you can multiply your leads, then you have an opportunity to you know, convert them to final sales. So, you know, copy plays a very, very critical role in terms of even visuals, especially when the objective is lead generation using landing page. Then of course, you know, we have been talking about email subjects. There are various things you can do. Can you be controversial? You know, even in this case, Amazon had just single word as a subject which dis differentiates from other. I don't know how many of you notice, make my trip uses plain as a unicode. So you can use asterisk, you can use lot of special characters in the subject. Right? Then finally, you know what is very, very important is, I was reading day before, Google has almost 50% of their searches on mobile now. So you need to make sure that your presence on mobile is optimized for that. Like this is an example of Moto 360, which is their desktop or a laptop presence. And the equivalent of that, they converted for mobile, which is completely different. You know, the copy is much shorter, a lot of the content. So you cannot just have the same content be republished for mobile, right? Now, I also wanted to leave you with some of the tools which you can use so that it's not just a guesswork. Of course, it has both art and science into it, but these tools help you objectively measure. So VWO, Visual Website Optimizer, you know, Indian company doing really well is one of the popular A-B testing tools, which allows you to test different copies, right? You may test different aspects, maybe the label of the call to action button, maybe the form title, maybe the page title, you can create as many permutation combinations. Then similarly, you have Kissmetrics, which is an evolved version of analytics. While Google Analytics is free, it tells you more about you know, the sources and all, this tells more about the behavior, the visitors, more about them. And then you have Crazy Egg, which shows you the heat map in terms of when people came to your website or a landing page, you know, which portion they were paying attention to, which section they scrolled, from where did they exit, so that you know what kind of copy or which copy is not working for you, right? Great. So this is all I wanted to share, uh, so that, you know, we have our minds open. And of course, all of us are becoming more and more uh, critical about digital and it become critical. So what we will now do, Shom, is we want you to apply some of these learning. To a case study. Sorry? To a case study, to right? A case study, so right? I think our volunteers, can, can you go ahead and distribute